How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today I have three Karen stories that I know that you will enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, watch, listen to this on Spotify if you haven't already or if that's your preference, first link in the description, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this first Karen story, Alex. So anyways, right, Alex was, you know, tasked to babysit his cousin, and they were at a fair. So basically, Alex and his family... You know, they were staying with, you know, the other part of Alex's family with his cousin. And, you know, they all, you know, they were hanging out for like a week together, just some quality family time. And, you know, Alex was asked to babysit his cousin because Alex was significantly older. His cousin was like six or something. And, and he was asked to babysit him when they were going to the fair because, you know, maybe the parents wanted to go somewhere else. Maybe, you know, they just wanted to give Alex and his little cousin flexibility to do what they wanted to do. Alex was around 15 at the time, so he wasn't an adult, but he was definitely old enough to, like, have that sort of responsibility. So anyways, Alex and his little cousin, they were walking around. They were checking out rides they wanted to go on. And all of a sudden, they were standing in line for one of these rides. And behind them came a Karen. And this Karen was like the quintessential Karen. And she was also, she was going on these rides by herself, which is totally fine. But the following actions are not as if, you know, she's trying to do it for her, like, son or her kid or whatever. It's because she wants to go on the ride. So anyways, right, Alex and his little cousin, they're standing in line for this ride that they both really want to go on. And the Karen behind them goes like, excuse me, gentlemen, and they both turn around. She's like, um, I really want to go, like, I really want to go on this ride. Like, I need to go soon. Can I cut in front of you guys? And the thing was, like, you know, this line was, uh, this was a pretty big line. So, you know, there was, like, a lot of people. And, uh, you know, Alex, you know, Alex and his little brother, you know, Al not his little brother, his little cousin, Alex was kind of thinking to himself, like, no, like, I don't want that, like, Look, we've been waiting, waiting in line for a while. I just don't think I can do that. And so, you know, Alex says, hey, like, I'm sorry, like, we don't have a ton of time either, but I feel like this line's going pretty quickly. And the Karen is like, but I'm your elder and a lady. That should be, like, double the respect, so you must allow me to pass you in line. And, like, at this point, you know, Alex was kind of just, like, looking at her, like, ma'am, I'm sorry, no. Because, like, first of all, bro, like, maybe... Maybe if like you had like a little kid and you're like explaining to me, look, my son really wants to go on this line. We have to go like our ride is coming in 10 minutes. Can you please let us cut? Okay, fine. But if bro, if you're just like a Karen who wants to go on the ride, look, I want to go on the ride too. And my little cousin wants to go on the ride. And I, I just don't think I'm going to let you cut on this one. I'm sorry. I have no obligation to do that. I get it that you're older than me. I get it that you're a lady, bro. But that doesn't matter. That simply doesn't matter. And the thing is, right, you know, the Karen supposedly took it very well. And she was like, oh, okay, that's fine enough. The, the thing is, though, right, this was kind of like, this was not actually the reaction in her head. Apparently, the Karen was so shocked that anyone would say no to her that, like, all this rage and anger started to build up. It started to just, like, build up and fester, and she started to get angrier and angrier. And Alex and his little cousin turned, like, back around, right? They're not going to continue on the conversation with the Karen. It's a little awkward right now, but, you know, they're just not going to continue on the conversation, you know what I mean? And uh, so, sure enough, right, the Karen says, excuse me, boys, once again. And she kind of had a tone in her voice, like, you know, that kind of tone when someone says, like, that, you know, when someone has, like, the tone that's, like, kind of, like, a babying voice where they try and baby you, but it's also super, super condescending, where they're like, hello, can, you know, can you turn around for a second? I just want to talk to you just one sec like, I don't know, like, a little kind of, like, voice like that. So Alex already knew. He already knew from this, like, right off the bat that they were going to be in for some nonsense, bro, some, some grade A, class A nonsense. So sure enough, Alex turns around. He's like, okay, what's up? Like, what, what, what's going on here? And, you know, the, the Karen is like, what's your two relationship? Like, what's the deal with you two? And Alex is like, oh, this is my, like, little cousin. I guess the Karen wanted to know if they were, like, siblings or friends or random people. I don't know. And the Karen is like, you know, Alex, I really don't think that you're doing, or she didn't say Alex because she didn't know his name. She's like, you know, I don't think that, you know, you're doing a good job showing, res like, teaching your little cousin respect. You did not do a good job at all teaching your little cousin respect. That's all I got to say. 
It's not very respectful of you. You know, he's looking up to you. He needs a good teacher, and you're honestly not a good teacher for him. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're not teaching him respect. I asked if I could cut in front of you, and I am your elder, and you said no very rudely. And so Alex is like, quickly, he's like, hey, well, come on now. Like, I, I didn't say it rudely, and like, I'm sorry. I, we just want to be on this ride too, and the line isn't that crazy. Like, come on now, like, it's all good. Yeah, maybe Alex could have let her go in front of her. It's not like the biggest deal either way, but the Karen was making it like the biggest deal ever, and she's like, you know what? You know what? Fine, you know what? I, he's gonna, you know what? <sighs> The Karen is just like stumbling over her words at this point. And Alex kind of just turns back around and she says, you know, your little cousin's going to learn manners one way or another. I won't let him not learn it. And Alex felt that that was like a really weird way to word it. Like that was a really weird way to say like, I'm going to make sure that your little cousin learns manners. Like, what do you mean? Like, we'll never see each other again. Alex at that point thought that he would never see this woman again. However, he was unfortunately very mistaken. He was quite mistaken. So anyways, eventually Alex and the little cousin get to the, get to the ride, front of the line. They're led on and it's a fun ride and they had a good time. So they get off and the little cousin's like, or Alex is like, hey, can you just wait here? I'm going to go to the bathroom. Alex goes in the bathroom, washes his hands, you know, does all this stuff. He comes out, his little cousin is gone. So immediately he just gets a pit in his stomach. He's like, oh my God. Like he starts yelling out. He's like, he's like, he's like, uh, Ben, Ben, where are you? We're going to say the little cousin's name is Ben. Ben, like, this isn't funny, man. You can't, like, you can't hide from me. I'm in, like, ah, I can't let this happen, right? Come on, come out now. And, you know, he started to get really nervous because, you know, understandably he's nervous. I mean, he was, he was tasked with taking care of this kid, and all of a sudden this kid disappears. So he starts looking around, and he yells out, like, Ben, Ben. And so he just starts walking out, and he's like, oh, my God. And Alex gets a buzz on his phone. He checks it. It's his mom being like, hey, can you meet us at the whatever in 10 minutes? And he's like, oh, no, not just the fact that I lost him, but now I got to be there in 10 minutes, and there's no way that I can tell my mom, oh, yeah, by the way, I lost our cousin. Yeah, no, I just lost him. So at this point, you know, Alex is walking around the fair trying to just figure out where his little cousin is, and that's when he gets a glimpse of someone that he thinks is his little cousin. So he immediately runs over, and it's just like a crowd of people, a huge flood of people are walking in his direction. That basically just means he's slowed down, he's struggling to get there, he's being pushed back and all this kind of stuff, And but he definitely very clearly sees that it's his little cousin. So he's like, oh my God. And he sees his little cousin, and his little cousin is like being led by someone. And he's so confused, like, who's leading him? And he looks up, it's the Karen. The Karen has the little, has like the little cousin's hand and is holding it and it's kind of dragging him around. Remember, the little cousin's like three or four. So for all we know, the Karen said, hey, I know your mom, like come with me. Which first of all, bro, like that's like the first thing my mom told me. She's like, look, white van or stranger, don't get in. They need help like finding their puppy. Like, don't get in, bro. Like, I'm sorry, they got candy. Don't get in, bro. I, I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Don't do it. So sure enough, right, you know, Alex at this point is freaking out, which understandably I would be freaking out too. And he, but at least now he knows where his little cousin is. So he starts like walking the direction of the Karen. And, you know, the Karen is like, turns around and sees Alex and starts moving away faster. The Karen is basically trying to kidnap this kid, right? So Alex turns to a security guard and says, hey, like my little cousin, his name is Ben. He looks like this. He pulls out a photo. He's with this woman who was like talking to me earlier. She basically has like, you know, abducted him or whatever. So the security guard takes this very seriously. and says, okay, thank you. And he goes and just walkie talkie and says, hey, if you see a kid who is about like, uh, four four feet tall, brown hair, wearing a Buzz Lightyear shirt with a woman about five five six hundred pounds. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> with this like a uh, glasses, shorter haircut, and a pink shirt. Please stop them at security. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's kind of the description. And that that's when like Alex starts going out. He starts sprinting. He starts running really fast, and he just can't find them. And he's freaking out. Right. He also gave the security guard his number so he could contact him. And his mom is like, sends a text and Alex looks at his phone. It's, it, the text says waiting dot, dot, dot. 
At, at this point, Alex realizes it has been 10 minutes. And remember, his mom said, I need you to be here in 10 minutes. So at this point, right, Alex needs to be there in 10 minutes, or it needs to be at this point place. He doesn't have his little brother, or not his little brother, his little cousin, and his little cousin has been abducted by the Karen. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below as the secret word of the day. I'm going to hire as many comments as I possibly can that say Karen. And also, if you want to continue supporting the channel, the best way you can do it and help the channel grow and reach new people is literally just by watching more videos. So after this one, sit down and watch more of them. And please let me know in the comment section, what are you doing while watching these videos? Like, uh, are you drawing or trying to go to sleep or playing a video game or cleaning your room? I don't, I don't really know. I'd love to hear it. I ask every time because I am genuinely interested. Also, as I said briefly in the beginning of the video, all of these videos are on Spotify. And even if you're not a huge Spotify user, I do put these videos up at least normally about an hour before they go up on the main on here on Spotify. So if you want to get a taste of what the story is early, go to Spotify. If you are using Spotify, follow, turn on notifications, and please rate five stars. And if you want to submit these stories, these are all subscriber submitted stories. Go to either my Twitter or Instagram. They're both at Connor Pugs. They're both in the, in the description of this video. Follow me and then send me a DM. If I don't get to it right away, sometimes I use stories from like I get submitted four months ago. I literally have used stories four months ago, right? So if I don't respond to it right away, don't take that the wrong way. And also sometimes I use your story and I don't even respond because I write it down. I just go straight to it. So always be checking in with the videos. With that being said, use code ConnorPugs for 10% off gamer subs, join our Discord server, and let's get back to the story. So sure enough, right, Alex is kind of racing around, and at this point, he's really freaked out. Like, he's like, oh my god, like, uh, oh, what am I, I going to do? Like, this is so bad, this is so bad, and that's when he gets a phone number, or a call from a phone number that he doesn't recognize. He picks it up, and it's kind of like, hello, and it's a security guard officer. And the security officer says, hey, can you come to section B of the place? Like, the security office is section B. And he's pretty close to section B, so he immediately rushes over and goes there. So Alex very quickly rushes over to the security office in section B. He gets there, and the security officer has the Karen and his little brother kind of not held captive, but asked them to wait. And he's like, are these like the two that you described? And he's like, yes. And the little brother like runs over to Alex, gives him a big hug. And he's like, dude, like little bro, like you can't, or not little brother, cousin, sorry. He's like, little bro, you can't be going at, you can't just be like going off with random people who ask. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't know any better. So the security officer kind of turns to the Karen. And is like, ma'am, like, can you explain this? And she's like, yes, yes, I can. This little boy over here, and he points to Alex, was very rude to me, so rude. And he is a bad influence on his little cousin. So what I was going to do was I asked the little cousin to come with me and I was going to teach him manners, respect, how to be a gentleman. But you guys decided to stop me in my tracks before I could do that. And the police and the security officer is like, well, you know, did like, did, did you get like permission from the parents or the guardians, right? And he kind of points to Alex. And Alex is like, no, I had no idea. I was searching for my little cousin for a while. And, you know, the security guard's like, okay, well, like, how, what did you tell the little cousin to get him to come with you? And, you know, the, uh, the Karen was like, uh, I told him I was going to teach him how to be a gentleman. And the little cousin's like, no, you said that you know my mom. And she's like, well, uh, uh, and the security guard's like, so, ma'am, you're telling me that you took this little boy, like, that you took this little boy, dragged him with you, and basically said that you knew his parents when you didn't. And the Karen's like, well, you know... Things might have happened, and the security guard's like, I'm sorry, ma'am, I cannot allow you to ever come back to this place. Like, if this, if Alex chooses to, or the family chooses the final report, we're going to have, like, with the police, we're going to have to go with it. And she's like, what? You know, this is my favorite amusement park. You can't take that away from me. You can't take that. That's cruel. You can't take that away from me. I, I won't allow it. I won't allow it. You don't understand. I want, and the security guard like is like, all right, ma'am, come with me. And she's like, no, no, no. And she's being dragged out. So Alex goes, calls his mom. His mom's like, Alex, where were you? We're so worried. And Alex is like, man, like mom, uh, uh, trust me. I have a good reason for it. Tell us where to meet you. And I'll explain everything when we get there. So, you know, Alex's little brother, or sorry, Alex's little cousin, I keep getting that messed up, walk over to, you know, the place that they're meeting his mom and the mom. And then, you know, the little cousin's mom is like, oh, where have you guys been? You like, what is going on? And Alex is like, well, I have a good explanation. Here's what happened. 
So the subscriber we're going to call uh, for the next Karen story is George. So anyways, right, you know, Karen, uh, George was working at the movies. So this was like George was a teenager. He was working on the weekends at the movies to make a little extra money. So he, Karen, uh, Karen, George was working behind like the stalls. Like, I don't know if you've been to a movie theater, but if you have, you, you know that you can buy popcorn, you can buy candy, you can buy drinks and stuff like that. And that's actually where movie theaters really make their money. So George was like the person behind there basically making the popcorn and ringing up the register when people would buy it. And earlier that day, a Karen and her family came in and got a lot of stuff, including some popcorn. And, you know, she said, hey, can I have some extra butter on it? And George was like, all right, fine, that sounds cool. And he puts on the butter, he does a good job, hands over the popcorn. Two hours later, two whole hours later, the Karen returns and she is not looking very happy. And the Karen walks up with an empty container, two empty containers of popcorn, right? And she walks on up and she's like, you like, or are you the young man who like made my popcorn? And George already knows by, first of all, the tone of the Karen, the way she's walking up to him, him, all of this stuff. George already knows that, oh boy, like this is, this is, this is not going to be good. So he's like, yes, I was. He's not going to lie to her, but he's not happily admitting it. And she's like, I want a refund. It was not buttery enough. And, uh, you know, normally when someone has a complaint about something like that, like, that's fine. But what George normally does is he just remakes the popcorn. He never really, like, I, I don't know. He doesn't, like, give a refund. And also, the situation here is a little bit different. Because the Karen came up with two completely empty boxes of popcorn. And, you know, you know well, George kind of points it out. He's like, well, ma'am, it looks like... Maybe you didn't enjoy it the most, but you and your family enjoyed it enough to finish both boxes. And the Karen's like, that's irrelevant. We choked this popcorn down. It didn't have enough butter. And George is like, ma'am, I'm sorry. Like, I can't really give refunds on that. Normally, like, if you came to me and, like, you had ate some of it and it wasn't to your liking, I would have no problem making you another thing of popcorn. However, like, I, I just can't, I, I can't issue you a refund because, like, you ate all, like, you ate all the pot, you ate all the popcorn, and then you're coming to me with an empty container asking me to give you your money back because it wasn't good enough. That's just not really how it works here. Like, I'm sorry. And the Karen is like, what do you mean you can't give me a refund? I, I, I think, I think you're, I think you're discriminating me against because I'm your elder. This Karen is like 40 or something. And George is like, ma'am, what? Like, uh, this makes no sense. She's like, you know what? If you don't give me a refund, you're getting a discrimination lawsuit because you hate me because I'm old. That's why you're not giving me a refund. And it, George was just like, ma'am, like, that's absurd. That's obviously not the case. And she's like, you're absurd, George. And he's like, oh my God. And he looks down. Yes, he has a name tag that says George. So that caught him off guard a little bit. But, you know, he was like, um, I, I, I don't know what else. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I just can't give this to you. It was partially, the reason why George didn't give, like, the, the refund was partially because his own, like, morals slash ideas of how the world works. You can't go in to a movie theater who doesn't, movie theaters don't make a ton of money, especially nowadays. This happened a little while ago, but especially nowadays. And they, they only make money and a little bit of money on, you know, the food that they sell. So asking that, you know, George, like, refund the food after the person ate it all just doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes, if he actually mess it up and put, like, I don't know, pepri paprika spice or, like, hot sauce in the popcorn instead of salt and butter, sure, full refund, whatever. But he just didn't add enough butter, and he did remember putting a lot of butter in it. So he was like, okay, ma'am, no. But also the other half is his manager has a very strict, like, you can't give refunds unless, like, something terribly goes wrong. And there's, like, a very few, like, situations where that's okay. So he's like, um, I, I don't know what else to say, but I, I can't give this to you. And the Karen's like, you know what? You know what, George? I want to hear from your manager. And the thing is, right, George's manager was kind of, was kind of strict, was kind of an older guy. Like, he definitely did not like being bothered by George. George, you know, kind of, you know, respected him enough to not bother him that much also. So George was kind of unhappy that he had to pull out his phone and call up his manager. His manager picks up. He's like, what? George is like, a customer wants to speak with you. And the manager's like, can you not deal with it yourself? And George is like, I'm trying to, but she demands that she speaks with you. 
and the Karen is sitting there all with a big smug look on her face. The Karen probably thinks that, you know, after this, that she will 100%, most definitely, right, that she will most definitely get a refund, and the manager will come out on his knees like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. You're so right. I'm so wrong. I'm a big idiot, and you're the smartest person ever, ma'am. I'm sorry. So the Karen's waiting there all smugly, and that's when the manager comes out. And the Karen starts like yelling at the manager. She says, your employee won't give me a refund on this popcorn. He didn't put enough butter. And the manager takes one look at the Karen and looks at the fact that she is holding two empty popcorn containers. She is eating, she has two empty popcorn containers. The manager said, ma'am, did you eat all that? And she's like, yes. And we choked it down. I demand a refund. Manager's just like, no. And she's like taken aback. She's like, you and your employer are saying no to me because you're discriminating against me because I am an elder. And the manager's like, how old are you? And she's like, that's a rude question. I'm 48. And the manager's like, I'm 52. I'm not discriminating against you because of your age. I'm saying no because you obviously are just trying to swindle us out of our money. Ma'am, movie theaters don't really make any money. And the only money that we make, the, one, the little bit that we scrape by is from the food. Don't try and rob us because you're too lazy, like, because, like, you, you just, don't try, basically, just don't try and rob us, ma'am. I know for a fact that you ate all that popcorn and thought it was fine. If you didn't like it, you wouldn't have finished it. And then you came back here demanding a refund. That's ridiculous. Please go along your way. And she's like, I'm going to tell everyone on Facebook that this is the worst movie theater ever. I'm never taking my family back here. I'm never going to do it again. And the manager's like, okay. Bet. Nice. Bye. She's like, <sighs> I'm going to tell everyone on Facebook. I have so much power on Facebook. You don't even understand the amount of power I have on Facebook. I will crush you. I will crush your little tiny movie theater. Uh, you don't understand my power. And uh, George was just standing there like, oh, well, uh, I mean, I got a story to tell my mom if she asked me when I come back home. Uh, so the, we're going to call the subscriber of the next story, Will. So anyways, right, Will worked at an, uh, at an after-school gymnastics uh, program where kids would be dropped off after school. They would learn all the whatever, right? And the end of the semester, I don't know what you'd even really call it. It was like an after-school program. At the end of the program, let's say, um, there was kind of like a little bit of a competition. The parents would, would be invited. They would be allowed to come. And they would give out prizes. They'd give out, like, the gymnastics program award. We're just going to say that, like, the best, like, the most improved award, the whatever award. Kind of like a, it's kind of like a whatever little fun award ceremony. Not everyone got an award, but it really was not that deep. That's what you got to understand. This was, like, a little fun after-school program. And they gave out little dinky awards. And at the end of the day, it simply, simply was not that deep, okay? It just was not that deep. Uh, but anyways, right, so, uh, you know, who was the... Will. Sorry, forgot who the name we were using. So anyways, right, Will worked at the place after school. It was a good, like, little after school job. He himself was a gymnast, and he was going to college to be a gymnast. So doing this for his senior year was kind of fun, and he got a little money on the side as well. So he was teaching all the kids, and there was this one kid who, call, who we're going to call Ben. And Ben was like a cool – like he was fine. He was a cool kid. He did what he needed to do, but he just didn't win any of the awards because like even before the, the show, they kind of just decided who was going to win the awards. At the end of the day, the show was just kind of like to show off to the parents and to allow the parents to see a little bit of what their kids learned. And then, and then right after is like the award ceremony or whatever. And uh, sure enough, right, you know, one thing about the awards you got to know is it's normally they, they try and give out awards to kids when it's their first time showing up. So if kids have been coming to the camp for like seven years, they're probably not going to give them the award. The reason for this is the reason why they give out these awards is kind of like an incentive, like if a kid for kids to come back. Because, like, a kid, it's their first year there, they have a fun time, and then they get an award. Mom, Mom, I want to come back to gymnastics camp. But if a kid's been coming for a while, they're like, ah, we'll give it to someone new anyways. So sure enough, right, you know, Will hands out this award. Or, no, sorry, I skipped ahead. Uh, so sure enough, right, it, the parents come in. Will greets them at the door. It's like, hello, everyone. Welcome to the gymnastics show. He hands out these little fake flyers or whatever. And all the parents, like, line up in the, in the gym slash or auditorium in a row of seats. And sure enough, one by one or in pairs, kids come out and they do whatever they're doing. Some kids are just doing like handstands or 
you know, I don't know, ac like very low skill acrobatics. Hand I can't, I, I don't even know if I can do a handstand. Don't take that as offense, right? However, some others come out and they do something more advanced and it's a whole range of things. Because, you know, anyone's allowed to come to this camp. So kids who have no experience, kids who are really good, whole range. And they wanted to show off this whole range, right? So, you know, sure enough, right, you know, they all the parents are clapping. Everyone's very happy. And then Will is up there with his other camp counselors doing the rest of the award ceremony. So they get up there and they're like, all right, so to the, the, the most improved goes to so-and-so and everyone claps. The funniest guy or the funniest camper award goes to so-and-so. Everyone claps, right? The most improved goes to so-and-so. Everyone claps. The overall model camper award goes to so-and-so. Clap, clap, clap. And the, uh, the gymnastics cup goes to so-and-so. Everyone's clapping, right? And the one thing you got to know is that Ben's name was not called. Ben didn't really care that much. He got it last year, so he thought that was cool. He's like, okay, whatever. Someone else can get it. But you know who was very happy about Ben getting it last year? Ben's Karen mom. He really liked it. He really liked the fact that, you know, he got an award last year. So you immediately see someone stand up in the auditorium, and it is Ben's mom, a.k.a. the Karen, and scream out, Is that all the awards? And uh, Will was like, uh, yep, that's, first of all, this is very weird. Like, parents don't normally scream out and, like, talk. But Will, who's thinking on his feet, is like, uh... Yep, that's that's all the awards for this year, folks. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming. I, you know, you can also pick up a little uh, your kids' uh, journals because every single day they do a little journaling or whatever. They're in the back of the auditorium. Uh, you can also come talk to us if you uh, if you want any one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, our coaches that are available are over and hear the kid and say, "Are you sure there's no more awards?" Will is, first of all, Will has just been interrupted twice. He's like, yes, ma'am, this is it for our programming. Once again, thank you guys so much for coming. And then you hear, the awards have been rigged. The whole award show is rigged. And Will is just like, what? And everyone kind of turns around to look at this woman. And she starts stopping her, boom, 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 boom. She starts stopping her way up to the front. And everyone's like, oh, my God. She gets up on stage. She goes up, and Will is so, like, shocked. He is so just, like, taken aback by everything that's happening that he basically willingly lets the Karen snatch the microphone out of his hand. She takes the microphone, and she's like, Yeah, I want to let you know that the award ceremony is rigged. Last year, my son won the Model Camper Award, and this year I know for a fact that he was not just a model camper, he was the best model camper at this camp because he was twice as good as he was last year. And I want to let you know that whatever fraud went down will not be tolerated. I, and, he, and she like turns out and she says, I don't know who won the model camper this year. It was some kid, we'll call him like Steve. But I know for a fact that his parents bribed you. And she turns around and points at Will. And Will grabs the microphone back and is like, ma'am, like, this is ridiculous. The awards are a little token that we give out at the end of the year. This is not some big crazy thing. And the Karen snatches the microphone back. It's like, no, you don't understand. This is a really big deal. And you're just not appreciating how much I care about this. You don't understand anything. <laughs> you don't understand. And she like, starts like running off stage. It's like, oh, Ben, come with me. We're never coming back to this stupid camp ever again. Grabs him by like the, the scruff of his neck. Remember, Ben doesn't care. He doesn't care if he wins the award or not. That's not what, that's not, that, that is not what is important to him. And he's like, okay, mom, like, whatever you want. And, uh, yeah, so at this point, uh, oh, what I call him, Will, Will is kind of like, okay, everyone, well, that was kind of weird, and everyone kind of laughs a little bit, but just so you know, uh, <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for having your kids with us. I'm sure they had a great time. And the thing is, next year came around, and Ben showed up again. And Will, like next year, because Will is now a counselor, first year in college, but he came back for the summer, so we did the summer program. And he's like, Ben, like, I didn't think I'd see you here again. And he's like, yeah, well, uh, you know, my mom, it took me a while, but I used this as kind of like my birthday present to be allowed back here. And my mom, you know, not really wanting to get me a real birthday present was fine with that. And Will's like, yeah, okay, well, uh, 
I don't know if we can allow her back at the award show. And Ben's like, you know what? I was thinking about that. So I told her the award show is being held on Saturday. They, they, they hold it on the Friday, right? And uh, she's just going to show up to an empty auditorium. So everything will be okay. And uh, we'll click on the video on screen Smart right guy. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it.